Deer and Hall, 46, 47. I don't know, something like that. Darren, how'd you get into logging? What was your first job out in the woods? Chipping mud off the jacks of one of these big skagits. Okay. Uh, actually, scooping tie was the first one. My dad's new tower that he had at the time. What size was that? Oh, it's a 110 or 120 foot tube on it. But they were an uh, inch and three eighths or inch and a half. I can't remember. Skyline machine. They were, they were a very large yard. Now, when you um, got to be old enough to where you could go out and working the brush or what have you were you um cutting timber or working in the rigging or what'd you do oh well at first at 10 years old i was working on the landing and then after that you know progressed my way up but uh in the summers but when i three days after i turned 18 i went to work for paul logging out of woodland and uh, setting jokers for them and then uh, pulling rigging a bit you know they broke me in pulling rigging but then went to chasing because chaser wasn't showing up and uh, I was proficient with power saw, so I did that, but I always saw the cutters driving by, and it's, by the time I was 19, I was cutting timber. Oh, cool. How long did you do that for? 20-plus uh, years. Um, probably did that up until uh, 2012. Okay. And, um, I mean, you know, being a business owner, you get to do a little bit of everything, but what would you say the most fun the funnest job, how's that? The funnest job that you've had in the woods? Oh, it's hand falling for sure. Okay. Um, currently, though, it's, you know, tether cutting, tether logging, you know, that's not like that. Uh, but anymore, it seems like I'm stuck in the feller bunch or the low bed. Okay. Or a pickup. Now, how many employees do you have? I think we've got 16 or 17 currently. Mm -hmm. And do you do. Um, Road building as well, or are you just ground base and tower? Oh, we do road maintenance. We don't actually build new construction, but we'll, you know, we'll do road maintenance. We got a little 160 blade runner. We got a clean on You know, clean up build landings, clean ditches. You know, yeah. short spurs, turnouts, that kind of stuff. But no new construction. Okay. And um, how many outfits have you worked for over the years? You think you just took a rough stab at it. Okay. When I was a kid, you know, back in the early 90s, I mean, you could work at a different outfit every day. And, mm -hmm. You know, was, if the hook tender quit and went somewhere, you quit and went with it. Yeah. You know, or, uh, you know, we'd be cutting for one outfit, we'd strip out, so then we'd have to go to work somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Just the way it was. And who would you say, out of all those different outfits that you've worked for, the one that stands out in your mind the most, whether it be um, difficult or uh, best outfit, uh, um, best crew. Yeah, okay. How about biggest character you worked with or still do work with? <laughs> Our shovel operator here, Louie. <laughs> he's, he's a regular card. Uh, <laughs> no, we've got really good guys here. They're all, you know, got their own own little personalities. Mm -hmm. and they're pretty funny to get them going together. But again, Jeff Gould, he was a funny one to work with. He, yeah. He was just a riot. Yeah. And now... Um, Switching gears here, what's your thought on the industry and where things are going with cable logging and whatnot long term? Turning out like the dodo bird, it's going yeah. extinct. There's, uh, there's just not enough money in it. I mean, if you look at the piece that we're doing here, uh, you know, in Jefferson County right now, it's you 
could give us the timber, we still wouldn't be making a ton of money on it. Um, with the prices of everything, the way they've gone up, I mean, off-road diesel went up 80 cents alone last week. Oh. Um, you know, combined with the company of our size, with our swing machines and yards and stuff running, just the off-road fuel, we need another uh, load and a quarter a day to cover the increase in cost. You know, when you're already at max production, that's pretty tough to make up. Do you have kind of an outlook on, are we looking five, eight, 10, 15 years and there's gonna be um, even more of a thinning of cable loggers out there? Oh, it's happened already. It's not even taken that long. Um, you know, there's been five or six just in the last six months that have pulled the pin and it's only gonna increase. Uh, yeah. Labor and industries, fuel, um, just the work ethic labor shortage. Um, and the guys that are out there, uh, even 10 years ago, you wouldn't let them in your crew bus, but now you're forced to, and they all think they're worth top dollar. Um, it's just it's a recipe for disaster. Now, are you finding that these days you're doing more um, training of new crew, getting people that are green, or are you um, finding people, like you said before, where they've got experience, but you maybe not your first pick well it's a good mix between the two we take one or two green guys a year and uh, you know break them in and work with them uh, i've been thankful that i've gotten a handful of really good guys from companies that have closed up retired um, you know a few of them are business owners in the logging industry themselves and just decided they're done with the fight mm -hmm. and uh, that's been a huge asset for us very cool and what about turnover? Are you finding that um, being that you've got a group of good guys you're uh, working with, are you still having a bit of turnover or is it still? One or two of the rigging guys, you know, the lower level guys, uh, we'll cycle through those. I mean, there's just, a, we're constantly, you know, if we, mm -hmm. if a good guy calls us, then we'll take him. Uh, truck drivers, it's, that's a con constant. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could own five trucks and be lucky if two were running on the road every day. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, it's hard for me to fathom because the wages have never been better. The equipment's never been nicer to run. And, uh, you know, benefit packages have never been better. But you just can't buy people to put in the seats. Yeah. And um, what would you have in the way of advice for a young person that wants to get into working in the woods? Any words of wisdom to chew on? Be the first one to the parking ride every morning, the last one to get in the crew bus at the end of the day, and the first one to ask if they can work Saturday. That's gold right there. Well, I appreciate that insight, Darren. That's good stuff. And um, I won't keep you too much longer, but something I've been curious about. Um, what is a standout memory you have of a scariest experience in the woods? Oh, I don't know if it was so much scary. Well, I guess it kind of was. Uh, three of us from the cat side working for Ar Arnie Albrick back in 1994. We're down out of Skamaka Way and we were mudded out. It was on Long Beach so we went over to work on the 071 side that was doing some downhill and the crew didn't show up so we went out on the rig and we're logging away well the whole hillside slid out we were in the middle of a landslide oh. rip lots tumbling over logs everything else and i don't know it took us down a couple hundred feet and jim king who's passed away now he was tangled up in a root wad and we had to get a saw to cut him out. He was just screaming bloody murder. Don't cut my pants. Oh, man. <laughs> but when we got him out and everybody was checked out all right, the first thing Arnie wanted to see was our cork boots and hard hats to make sure our hard hats weren't out of service and our cork boots were sharp. <laughs> that had an 